One of the big things that sets Epic Mickey apart from other games is how the story is told to the player. Or really, it's the player telling the story through their actions. Because the game allows the player to go through some events in multiple different ways, it can get confusing on what's in the Epic Mickey canon and what isn't. So I'm going to go through every event where the player can significantly change the outcome of some characters or places, and figure out whether the Paint Path or Thinner Path is canon for each one. The first choice the player is presented with in the game is with Gremlin Calvin, and you can either choose to free him from his cage, or you can choose to take a treasure chest instead of him and send Calvin flying into the sky. Thankfully for Gremlin Calvin though, it looks like Mickey did decide to save him in the canon. In the Clock Tower diorama in Epic Mickey 2, you can find an unnamed gremlin trapped in a cage. And even though in-game this gremlin doesn't have a name, in the game files he is assigned the name Gremlin Calvin. So I would say it's pretty fair to say that the paint path for Gremlin Calvin is canon. And speaking of the Clock Tower diorama, what happens to the Clock Tower in the canon? Mickey can either paint in the Clock Tower's arms to make him friendly, or thin out his arms to destroy him completely. And thankfully for me, it looks like the thinner path for the Clock Tower is canon, which means I get to show that clip of the Clock Tower dying just like I do in every other video. In the intro cutscene of Epic Mickey 2, when it's flashing through all the different things that happened in the first game, you can clearly see Mickey using thinner on the Clock Tower's arm. And Mickey also kills the Clock Tower in the Epic Mickey comic too, but he uses an anvil sketch to do it, which doesn't make that much sense because the player doesn't get the anvil sketch until way later in the game. So I'm not sure if I would really count that, but either way, the intro cutscene does definitely prove that the thinner path for the Clock Tower is canon. Horus is another character that has an ending cutscene in the first Epic Mickey game that can change depending on whether or not the player chooses to finish his quest line or not. If Mickey doesn't complete any of Horus's quests, then the cutscene shows Horus shutting down his detective agency, and if Mickey does complete all of his quests, then the ending cutscene shows Horus being celebrated by the citizens of Mean Street. And it looks like Mickey went the extra mile, because in Epic Mickey 2, Horus is still around and his detective agency is doing just fine. Obviously you can tell Horus did not decide to close his agency, so I would say that the paint path for Horus is definitely canon. I can also say that all of the animatronics are definitely repaired in the canon, because all of them are in Epic Mickey 2, they all have their own quest lines, you can see them walking around, so it is pretty obvious that the paint path is canon for animatronic Goofy, Daisy, and Donald. One of my favorite quests in Epic Mickey is this safe quest with Moody, where the player can either choose to paint in Moody's house to get the safe combination from Moody to unlock it, or they can just thin out this beam on the gag factory and crush <coughs> Moody with the safe. And as crazy as it already is, it looks like Mickey did crush Moody with the safe in the canon. In Epic Mickey 2, Moody has a whole side quest about him getting amnesia and losing his memory. That Moody. He used to be a big know-it-all, but after his accident, he's become a big know-it-nothing. And Mickey and Oswald need to bring Moody photos to help him get his memories back. And what would be a valid reason for Moody getting amnesia other than a massive safe falling right on top of his head? So yeah, the thinner path is definitely canon for Moody. Right after this quest is another one of my favorite quests in the game, where Mickey can either go and paint in three telephone boxes around Oztown for his telephone, or if Mickey lets Prescott into his house, then Prescott will straight up kill his phone in cold blood. And again, it's crazy enough that Prescott will flat out kill your phone, but in the canon, Mickey just lets this happen. In Epic Mickey 2, there is a voice line from the telephone that references the incident. Gus is so clever. He brought you back here and he put me back together after the incident. And there's a voice line from Gus too that seems to confirm this story. Not long ago, I found poor telephone's pieces scattered all over Oztown. Never did get the whole story on what happened to it. So yeah, both of these voice lines heavily imply that the thinner path is canon for the telephone. 
Now let's go all the way forward to the Petronic boss fight. And this is the only boss fight where I can say for certain that the paint path is canon. In Epic Mickey 2, Petronic is at Club 13. He is very much not derezzed like what happens at the end of the thinner path in the boss fight. And he's even pretty friendly towards Mickey and Oswald and he's willing to help him out. So I think it's pretty clear that the paint path for Petronic is canon. Once Mickey arrives at Ventureland, Smee tells him that in order to progress to Tortuga, he needs to complete three quests from three different NPCs. And I can only say that I know the canon pass for two of these three quests. One of these quests involves getting a compass from a character named Scurvy Pat, and this is never mentioned in the Epic Mickey comic or the Epic Mickey novelization. And even though Scurvy Pat is in Epic Mickey 2, it's just not said at all whether or not Mickey got the teddy bear for him or whether he just paid 25 e-tickets to get the compass. So I have no idea about that one. Tiki Sam asks Mickey to get three masks hidden around Ventureland, and the paint path for this quest is to actually go and get all three of the masks, obviously. And the thinner path is to only bring Tiki Sam two of the three masks, but trick him into thinking that you actually did get all three. But in Epic Mickey 2, in Tiki Sam's shop, all three of the masks are hung up on the wall, so it looks like Mickey did get all three of the masks. So the paint path for Tiki Sam's quest is definitely canon. And finally, there's Damien Salt. Damien Salt is in love with a cow named Henrietta, and Mickey can either give him flowers to help him get with Henrietta, or Mickey can give him ice cream and ruin his chances of ever meeting his love. But thankfully for Damien Salt, it looks like Mickey did give him the flowers in the canon. In Epic Mickey 2, there is a quest where Damien Salt has his own part of the quest line, and for this quest, he asks Mickey to help him get Hook's, Hook's treasure, treasure so that he can become captain, which will finally allow him to marry Henrietta. So clearly Damien Sol and Henrietta are together by the time Epic Mickey 2 happens, which would have to mean that the paint path for Damien Salt's quest is canon. Skull Island is an interesting one, because there's actually four ways the animatronic conversion machine can be dealt with. If the player uses thinner on all four of the paint and thinner pumps, then the machine will be destroyed, but it won't let any of the animatronic pirates turn back into Toon Pirates. Conversely, if the player uses paint on all four of the paint and thinner pumps, then the animatronic pirates will be able to turn back into Toon Pirates. However, the player could also just completely ignore all four of the paint and thinner pumps on the island, and if the player tries to mix both paint and thinner on the pumps on the island, then the machine will jam and it's effectively the same result as if the player had just ignored the machine. So did Mickey use paint or thinner on the pumps, or did he just jam them or ignore them altogether? Well, in Epic Mickey 2, it is mentioned that the pirates returned to Tortuga between the events of Epic Mickey 1 and 2. Can you believe we were forced out of Tortuga by that scurvy Blackbeard, and with Hook nowhere to be found? If they returned to Tortuga, then Skull Island would have had to be safe from the animatronic pirates, which would have to mean that Mickey didn't just ignore it or jam it. But from there, there is not really any way of telling whether Mickey used paint or thinner on the pumps. So for the sake of this video, I'm just gonna say that both the paint path and thinner path are canon for Skull Island. Captain Hook is another really interesting one, and not just because there's three ways to finish his boss fight. So just let me explain real quick. In the epic Mickey novel, Captain Hook does get eaten by the animatronic crocodile, which is the thinner path. But in Epic Mickey 2, the sprite is with Pete Pan Adventureland, which at a surface level would mean that the paint path would be canon for Captain Hook, right? But in Epic Mickey 1, it's also possible to just kill Captain Hook and then free the sprite, which still can counts as beating Captain Hook for the thinner path. And to make things even more confusing, in Epic Mickey 2 you can also find Captain Hook's clothes in Ventureland. Finding Captain Hook's clothes without Captain Hook himself being there would kind of imply that he is dead, but how would his clothes survive if Captain Hook sank to the bottom of the thinner sea? Captain Hook's clothes are made of tune and there's no way anyone would be able to recover his clothes, even after the thinner seas drained away after the events of Epic Mickey 1. 
I tried to see what Mickey does in the Epic Mickey comic, but even though Captain Hook is there, the outcome of the battle between Mickey and Captain Hook is not shown at all. So with all that on the table, I'm just gonna go ahead and once again say that both the Paint Path and Thinner Path are canon for Captain Hook. There's also two ways to go about progressing through the Lonesome Manor foyer. The player can either free a gremlin who will allow Mickey to use an anvil sketch to open the gate and progress to the stretching room, or the player can free a ghost trapped in a bottle named Screeching Sam who will let Mickey paint in some skulls to open the gate too. And this is a really small detail, but I thought I would include it anyway since I thought it was pretty cool. In Epic Mickey 2, Screeching Sam is mentioned once by Tedworth in Horace's Detective Agency. One of the other ghosts in Lonesome Manor, Screeching Sam by name, took my teddy bear, ripped him up, and scattered the pieces all around Blot Alley. Assuming that this whole teddy bear situation happened after the events of Epic Mickey 1, it's very likely that Screeching Sam was freed from his bottle by Mickey in the canon. The pipe organ in the Lonesome Manor Ballroom also has a cool quest that I really like. The paint path for this quest involves Mickey playing music for the pipe organ to calm him down, and the thinner path for this quest involves Mickey thinning out the keys on the pipe organ to make him even more angry. In Epic Mickey 2, there is a quest in Bug Easy that you get from a ghost named Raleigh, and judging by some lines of dialogue that Raleigh has for Mickey, it seems that Mickey did not help the pipe organ calm down in the canon. Well, it's a long story. See, me and Phineas, we used to be the stars of Lonesome Manor. Then the pipe organ went all nuts, and we were forced out of our home. But Phineas, he stayed behind. So yeah, according to Ghost Raleigh, the thinner path is canon for the pipe organ. And these last two, unfortunately, are gonna be pretty boring. The Shadow Blot boss fight and the Throne Room in Dark Beauty Castle are the last two significant choices that I wanted to include in this video, but neither of these events are ever mentioned in Epic Mickey 2, the novel, or the comic. Alright, it's post-production Mr. Nitrogen jumping in at 2 o'clock in the morning. The Shadow Blot fight is actually depicted in Epic Mickey 2 in the train dioramas. There are two different props that show the shadow blot, but even from this blot diorama, there's again no way in telling whether or not the paint path or thinner path was canon for the shadow blot fight. So I just wanted to clear that up real quick in case you got that idea. So even though it's really anticlimactic, there's no way of telling whether or not the paint path or thinner path is canon for either of these events. And with that, now we know the canon outcome for every event in Epic Mickey. I also think it's really fun to include some opinion or speculation on some of these events, so if you have your own ideas, then type it in the comments and I would really like to see it. Also, let me know if you want to see a video about the canon events for Epic Mickey 2, since that might be kind of cool. But yeah, that's all I have for this video, and thank you so much for 1000 subscribers. Or really, it's ha- <laughs> And it looks like a- What the f It looks like Epic Mickey, what? So it is pretty obvious that animatronic Goofy, Donald, and Daisy- Wait, now let's set the right order. So it is fairly obvious that- Well, it's not fairly obvious, it's really obvious. In Epic Mickey 2, Moody has his whole- But it's crazy that- <clears throat> He is very much not derezzed like the what would happen. Oh my god. Once Mickey arrives at Ventureland in order to If Mickey uses thinner on the Now I can't entire oh fing bitch. I'm just gonna say that both the pain path and thinner cath are what the f is the thinner cath?